Hi, everybody. So the purpose of this uh, recording is to show you how uh, to analyze um, nocturnal flight call recordings in Raven Pro. It does require a paid subscription. So I started by going to the Cornell uh, Raven website. You can just Google for Raven Pro Cornell. Uh, you can pay for a year subscription and then they'll email you uh, a code that you use to activate your subscription uh, once you install the program. And then um, you should get a uh, preset file for how your Windows should work. This was given to me by uh, Benjamin. And this uh, needs to be put in the right folder. Uh, so after you install it, it has uh, this Raven Pro uh, folder and then a uh, presets folder and then a sound window folder. And then I put in uh, my uh, file here called Generate Selections Review 3. Uh, that's what I'm going to use uh, for uh, viewing the, the spectrograms. So that's uh, in the right place and it's all installed. Um, so I'm going to say OK on what's new. I am going to uh, try to open up uh, a sound file. Just a little background, the sound file that we're going to be looking at um, is from midnight to 6 a.m. Uh, last uh, or this morning. And um, I'm probably only going to be analyzing the first hour here. Uh, you can see there's some, you know, this is the heat pump. Uh, from from my neighbor's house. This is the robins uh, singing in the morning. Um, well, all the other birds sing in the morning. Um, so that's basically what we've got uh, to work with. So uh, first thing that I'm going to do is open a sound file. There we go. There we go. The preset that I'm going to choose is this one that I put in the folder. I'm going to page the sound. Um, I want the sound windows to be about uh, 15 seconds wide. And then when I'm tabbing through uh, the the sounds um, yeah and when I make a small step I want my small step to be a three second step this when you make it about 95 percent that way if a call lands like right on the edge between the different windows you still have a chance to seeing it. So that's why it's not 100%. So there'll be a little overlap from the end of one page step to the to the next one. And loading in the first large sound file um, might take a little while. A um, few things that I do when I first get in here is I uh, tend to Get this little purple bar over uh, very close to the to the beginning. Um, I believe it's F1 and F2 uh, for zoom in and zoom out. So I tend to zoom out a bit until I can um, uh, see pretty much the whole window. I also tend to uh, play with these things. Uh, the darkness and the brightness, I, I usually reduce the contrast from their, um, from their defaults. Um, I believe that um, control, yeah, so uh, control um, comma makes a small three-second step 
left and right. So uh, step right is forward in time, step left uh, is when you hit comma, and step right is when you hold down control and hit plus. Then if you wanna step a whole page, um, then you hold down control and hit the right arrow, and that is paging you forward uh, 15 seconds at a time. And we might be getting into some birds now. Um, so these aren't uh, looking super clear, uh, but uh, that might be a ground-based uh, sparrow or uh, somewhere not super close to the mic. Um, here we go. Now it's getting closer. Um, so I'm going to take some small steps to get that in closer. I'm going to hit F1 to zoom in a little bit. Um, I wonder if that's a grasshopper sparrow. I hit Control Shift Y to play. Yeah, I think that might be a, a grasshopper sparrow. Um, and then we have a black and white warbler. Um, so, you know, it's it's working. It's uh, it's finding stuff. It's May. There's going to be some birds. Um, so. Anyway, I'll go back to the beginning um, and uh, start to show you uh, a few uh, of the um, annotation steps. So do you see how we have this uh, table down below? It's by default, it's table five and it has selection, view, channel, um, all this stuff. Um, that becomes useful once you start to um, find a sound. So. Here's how far I had to come before I found my first sound. I just click on the top left corner of the sound and drag to the bottom right corner of the sound and then hit enter. And then I can put um, SPAR, which is my abbreviation for Sparrow SP, um, and then hit enter. And it marks the begin time, 165 seconds into the recording. Um, it has the length of the uh, box, you know, my box wasn't perfect, so it's a little shorter than uh, 250 milliseconds. Um, the difference in frequency from top to bottom, and um, you know, it's it, this call is between uh, seven to nine kilohertz, uh, basically. So uh, that's that's the that's the first step, um, and I just hit enter again, uh, and it it starts to save. Um, this one might be that black and white warbler that sh uh, might call again. I'm just going to give it another listen. Not sure what that was. Um, it's pretty soft. Now, so I'm just going to box it and put passer in SP, which is, I abbreviate that as pass. Um, and then let's see how our overlap does. Okay, so I really think this um, may be a grasshopper sparrow with that skittery track, um, somewhat rising, fairly high, uh, fairly long. Um, the length of this is, um, you know, a little bit under uh, 200 uh, kilohertz. I'm gonna mark this down as grasshopper sparrow. And I'm going to mark this one down as black and white warbler. And zoom back out by hitting F2. And then uh, control right to take my next page step. And it looks like I'm getting into the, uh, some oven birds. Um, so I'm going to take some small steps. I'm going to zoom in a little. Um, this high pitch stuff might be like a sparrow. Junko, just wide play. Yeah, I'm not sure what that is. I'm just gonna put. Um, I'm gonna assume that these are connected, and I'm gonna put password. And then um, now I'm into oven bird, so I'll put an oven call here. Um, and then. Taking small page steps because I know I'm in the stuff. Um, oven. Uh, 
Oh, it's early May in Pennsylvania. We're going to have a lot of oven birds. I'm just going to call these oven birds, even though they're a little faded. I assume it's part of the same series. And then since I might be out of that initial pile, I can uh, let's take a closer look. I'm going to call that white-throated sparrow. It's a bit ambiguous, but it's the expected sparrow at this time of year anyway. So F2 it back out. And then big page steps. Getting all the raindrops here. Not sure what those tick noises are. It's probably another, the same sparrow. Oops. Uh, F3 and F4. Uh, do the vertical zoom. I was trying to hit F2 to zoom out and accidentally hit F3. And F1 zooms me in. Another big step. Oh, and more oven birds. Anyway, this uh, selection table that I've started to build um, can be saved. Uh, so I'm going to uh, save selection table, table five. And it by default connects the name of the selection table with the name of the wave file uh, that's created. Uh, so that's good. And this selections folder is pretty close uh, in the file structure to where I put in that presets file and I save it. So if I'm done and I close this, uh, you know, planning to come back and work on it later, uh, it's pretty easy to find where you were. Uh, you just open the, uh, the recent sound file. Um, and uh, you see that under recent sound files, uh, you also can uh, open the selection table um, and it'll be uh, looking in your um, same folder. So it's pretty easy to use and get started and you can just click on your last sound uh, and it'll jump right, right to that place. So, um, you know, I can just pick up right where I was and uh, sometimes if you click in the sound selection table, then your keystrokes uh, for paging uh, don't work. Um, if you click back up in here, it, it seems to want to start making a, a new thing, but you can just uh, hit um, uh, escape or backspace and it'll, it'll stop and then you can uh, page along and I can pick up and annotate my oven birds yet again. So that's how it works. Um, I like it and uh, it's obviously uh, quite good uh, for um, giving uh, annotations to um, the Farnsworth group for training their, uh, their models. So yeah, that's all.